Hi, my name is Jake, and I am a bookish drummer. So for this video, it's going to be my very first episode in a brand new Stephen King series that I'm calling If You Like This Stephen King Book, Then Read This Stephen King Novella. And yeah, I'm pretty much just going to be saying, you know, if you've read some of these more popular or maybe even less popular Stephen King books and really liked them, then here is a novella that I think would also suit your taste. And this is going to be a multiple episode series. I'm not sure quite how many episodes. It's going to be at least four or five. It'll all depend on how many uh, connections I can make. Uh, and for these first few episodes, the connections are going to be quite clear and very understandable. As you'll see from this episode, like very, you'll get it. <laughs> but the, the further on we get, the connections might be a bit more loose and maybe tongue in cheek. Uh, we'll see. But, but it's, it's going to be a lot of fun because I know a lot of constant readers and just even like casual Stephen King fans, they've read a lot of his more popular books like novels, but a lot of Stephen King fans still have not read his novella collections or, you know, novellas in general, which I think is a shame because, you know, if you've watched my content for any length of time, I think Stephen King is at his very best writing novellas. So, you know, like I said, if you like some of these you know, classic Stephen King novels, I really think you should go and check out these awesome novellas. And with all of that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into it. And like I said, for this first episode, it's going to be very obvious and even to the point where you're like, duh. <laughs> uh, so for this first one, if you liked The Outsider, you should read If It Bleeds, uh, which, you know, is this is a novella collection and the titular story, the title story, If It Bleeds, is a direct sequel to The Outsider. So obviously, if you really enjoyed The Outsider and you want more of, you know, this story, go check out If It Bleeds because it's a direct sequel. I think it's actually really good. And, you know, If It Bleeds just in general is a fantastic novella collection. And this really made, uh, it's a minor spoiler, but this really made me like the character of Holly a lot more. Like this is Holly's novella, essentially. And I really liked it. Um, and it's definitely a direct sequel to The Outsider. So if you enjoyed this, definitely check out this. And along those same lines, uh, if you enjoyed the Dark Tower series, you should read the Dark Tower novellas or the novellas, you know, that die, that, uh, that tie in directly with the Dark Tower. So there's three that I'm going to mention specifically that are definite Dark Tower tie-ins. The first one I'll mention is from the collection uh, Everything's Eventual, and it's titled The Little Sisters of Eulyria or Illyria, whatever. Uh, it's, it, this is a weird one to recommend because uh, you, it's a prequel to The Gunslinger, right? Which is the very first Dark Tower book. But you can't really read it without spoiling yourself until after you've read book four. So it's a prequel to book one, but you have to wait until book four to read it because it spoils the crap out of book four, which is actually, it, it's kind of weird, but that's a direct... Dark Tower novella. So basically, you know, a lot of people don't even know about this. Like even, you know, Dark Tower fans. Like if you've read the Dark Tower series and have never heard of The Little Sisters of Illyria, definitely check it out. It's not one of my all-time favorites, but it's worth reading if you really like Roland. So yeah, definitely go check that out. And then also in this collection, uh, the, the title story, Everything's Eventual, definitely ties into the Dark Tower I don't want to say how, in case you've never really heard of it, but it, it's a definite tie-in, so 
definitely check that out. Like, if you have this and you're already going to read Little Sisters of Illyria, go ahead and check that out, because that's also Dark Tower related. And then the last one I'll mention is Hearts in Atlantis, and this is kind of like a weird fix-up novel. It's like two novellas and three short stories that kind of connect in the end. The first one, however, is probably the best in this collection. It's called Low Men in Yellow Coats, and it's directly tied to the Dark Tower. Again, I don't want to say how. It kind of ties in for later books. Like, this was published a few years before, like, the final three books, and it definitely ties in and in a pretty interesting way. So definitely check that out if you're a big Dark Tower fan and you've never read it before. The next one that's super obvious, at least to me, if you liked The Shining, definitely check out 1408, which is another novella that's in this collection, Everything's Eventual. Uh, and basically the connection here is Haunted Hotel. <laughs> like The Shining is definitely one of the best examples of a haunted house story, and specifically this takes place in the Overlook Hotel. Very creepy, uh, very memorable horror, you know, one of Stephen King's most iconic books ever. Uh, not a lot of people have read the novella version of that story, kind of, which also deals with a writer going into essentially a haunted hotel and weird things happen. And that would be 1408. Uh, it's, it's, it's a novella, but it's on the shorter side. It's like 50, 60 pages. Definitely check it out. It's definitely very creepy and a lot of, like I said, a lot of weird things happen. Uh, yeah, it's got its similarities and differences, but I would say if you're a huge fan of, like, the horror elements of, like, you know, being in an enclosed place like the Overlook Hotel with a writer, <laughs> uh, definitely check out 1408. This next one I think is a clear example too, and it's an instance where both of these stories, people are often baffled that Stephen King actually wrote them, uh, the, and they've got their similarities and differences, but uh, I'm gonna just uh, announce it. Uh, if you enjoyed The Green Mile, definitely check out The Shawshank Redemption, which is the first story in Different Seasons, which is my all-time favorite novella collection. And it's an excellent novella, and essentially, you know, like I said, both of these are very popular Stephen King stories that a lot of people don't even know that they're Stephen King stories. And they both happen to take place in prisons. So if you really liked, you know, the prison elements and exploring the, the themes and stuff and the characters with a prison setting, then definitely check out Shawshank Redemption. It's definitely a similar vibe, although different things pop up here and there, obviously, and different stories. But yeah, uh, definitely two non-horror uh, elements. Like, so if you loved, you know, Stephen King, like, writing non-horror, Shawshank Redemption is definitely another clear example of that. And the prison stories and very, um, you know, I don't want to spoil too much, obviously, but a bit of a redemption arc for some characters here and there. And yeah, I, I really liked it. Um, yeah, definitely recommend if you really enjoyed The Green Mile, definitely check out The Shawshank Redemption. And the last one that I'll mention for part one of this series, if you enjoyed it, this massive tome of a book. If you enjoyed it, definitely check out The Body, also from Different Seasons. And you might know The Body more if you've seen the movie Stand By Me, which is the movie version of the novella, The Body. Also, you know, another story that people are kind of weirded out that Stephen King wrote too, because it's not really horror. So you might be wondering like, oh, you know, the giant horror tome 
like how does it relate to this small you know non-horror novella um basically the two main reasons are that they're both sort of coming age tales coming of age tales and they both follow a group of young protagonists so it you obviously have the losers club which has you know seven kids that all have to kind of like team together to battle pennywise in the 50s and then this one is a group of four young boys who you know have heard rumors of this body and and th this takes place in the 60s i believe and they go on a journey to go find it both are you know great kid characters which king is normally good at writing he's usually fantastic with kid characters so that's another reason and just coming of age just you know he's pretty good with coming of age stories too and these are definitely clear examples of that so i would say if you really enjoyed the kid characters in it and you want more of like that camaraderie that feeling those relationships uh you know definitely check out the body because that's another clear example in a novella form all right so those are examples of if you liked this stephen king book then check out this stephen king novella and those are kind of like the obvious answers, at least in my mind, especially with those sequels, because like, duh, <laughs> like if you really liked that and you want more of that story, go check out the sequel. So again, The Outsider, if you really liked that, go check out If It Bleeds, a direct sequel. If you love The Dark Tower and you haven't checked out The Dark Tower novellas, uh, what are they? Low Men in Yellow Coats, uh, Little Sisters of Illyria, and Everything's Eventual. Definitely check out those because all of those are directly tied into the Dark Tower series. And then you also have The Shining, which I think 1408 is kind of like a sort of a mini version of that. They're both haunted house tales and they both have writer main characters. So if you really liked The Shining because of the Overlook Hotel and all of the, like the supernatural weirdness that happens, definitely check out 1408. And then you also have The Green Mile and Shawshank Redemption. Again, people are very surprised that Stephen King actually wrote those stories. They both deal with prisons and, you know, characters in prison. So d similar themes happen. It's definitely different stories. But, like, if you like the prison setting and kind of like the, you know, non-horror side of King, definitely check out Shawshank, one of the best stories ever written. And then you have It and The Body. Very different, obviously. Definitely in length. <laughs> like, It is a horror tome and then the body is kind of like this coming of age novella but both have fantastic kid characters they're both coming of age and yeah that that's um that's what i've got for you today i definitely have more plans like i said this is the first episode in this series i'm not quite sure how many episodes i'm gonna do i think i have enough material for at least four or five and like i said as we continue the second episode will still have like clear connections. Um, you know, I'll go into more of that next Friday, next Stephen King Friday. And then as we get on, you know, some of these novellas are kind of hard to find connections with. So it might be a little tongue in cheek, but I think it'll still be a fun time. And of course, definitely leave down in the comments if you agree with any of my picks here or any of my suggestions and leave down your suggestions too. And if I really like them, I will, if I haven't come up with them already, because I have a list of like, I don't know, 20 or so. So if you come up with one, uh, I'll mention you in the video. Uh, yeah, definitely leave some down in case there's like one clear one that I just forgot about. So uh, leave some down below that you want to see in the next installment or the next few installments. I'll see if they're good. I'm sure they will be. Uh, and thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this content and you want to see more of this series, uh, please comment down below and like and subscribe. You know the deal. I also have the Bookish Tremor Discord where we're, of course, already kicked off with the Stephen King Short Story Book Club, The Bizarre Bad Dreams. We're off to a great start. I actually really enjoyed the first three stories that we've read so far. And most people seem to be enjoying them as well. So there's still plenty of time to... Uh, jump on that bandwagon because you know we're reading it one short story or maybe two short stories a week so if you're a little behind you can easily catch up because we're reading it very slowly until the start of may <laughs> so like you have months and months to catch up if you haven't read them yet but yeah that's all i've got for you today thank you guys so much for watching and have a fantastic day